Hello friends, this is Cauldron. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. We're here in Camp Broken Glass after having done the whole Licinia girl in green death of her and her sister arc last, uh, last session. And this, t at the end of the last video though, this Imperial Jewelist, this Imperial Soldier Jewelist, who I imagine is a little bit salty with me, said your farewells, have you? Yeah, he's, he's not... He's not my biggest fan. Uh, we're going to travel with him, with the twins, to meet his commander. And he's he seems like a hostile Imperial, but also an untempered Imperial, which is better than tempered, I guess. But before we do that, I want to talk to people around town, around the Camp Broken Glass, and then I want to take a look at these two side quests. So first we'll check in with the people around town. Magni. The lowly task of watching over provisions would not normally befit the sun. But these being unusual circumstances, I will let no man take, which is not by right theirs. Even guard duty is dramatic for this guy. Alphano. Perhaps it is unwise to volunteer for a mission so soon after the previous disaster. Nevertheless, I shall not squander this opportunity. Alizé. I know, I know. This won't bring, this won't bring back Lucinia or her sister taking the same risks, making the same mistakes. It's possible, but better to try than give up every time. Well said. And again, the mistakes you made were not... I, I think it is fair to acknowledge it as a mistake, that if your goal, whatever the faults of the Garleans, is to help the innocent among them, or to help those people who are at least non-combatants, who are just kind of living in Garlemald, poisoned by whatever their culture is, but still just just Garleans, then yeah, I think it's I think what you it's important to take that as a as a lesson that you if your goal is to help them, you don't you want to be really soft about it. You want to acknowledge their fears of you and you want to not put yourself in a position of direct power over them because they won't trust you then. But based, based on the whole seeing us as savages to be conquered and all that sort of stuff. Serena. Serena. We captured the boy he, as he was about to make off with our food. He, he must be very hungry to take such risks. Maybe we should give him something to eat. Reward him for his boldness. I think we're giving him something to eat anyway. Maxima. Julius Pyrnorbanus. It is unusual for one so young to achieve such a high rank. Very unusual. So... Hmm. His uniform identifies him as a member of the First Legion, which has a particularly fierce reputation. Whoever his superior may be, I advise you to approach them with caution. Your caution is well taken. And, yeah, it could either mean that he's especially accomplished, or just that, especially in the wake of the tempering and all this disaster, that they were just out of higher officers and they just had to promote whoever through the ranks as quickly as possible. Ishtola. I worry they were not in the best state of mind to volunteer for this undertaking, but what's done is done. I know you will take good care of them, and yourself as well, I trust. Yeah, they're, they'll, they'll get through it. They'll be okay. Arun Senna. They are resilient in the face of hardship. You as well. But good intentions and stubborn determination alone will not be enough to bring our mission to a successful conclusion. Be on your guard. Yeah, I think Alphino, if anything, will at least be on his guard more for this, whatever this coming thing is. Anyone else around here? Yeah! We got some other people. Albrecht, why do I know the name? Oh, Albrecht is the Dragoon guy. Several of the Temple Knights are often reconnaissance at present. We as Guardians have seen our fair share of frost in the past years, so we are more rare than ready for this icy bout. The Froth Hrothgar from Bozia, on the other hand are having a devil of a time adjusting to these chilly climes. The warming stones we lent them seem to have helped, though. Good, and they seem to have helped the Garleans before, you know, they attacked us. Manuki. We are owe our freedom to our Eorzean allies, and I was one of many to volunteer for this endeavor. We will be glad to lend our assistance wherever it is needed. Thank you. Sadu, Sadu, my queen. You have the smell of death about you. Not from killing, but mourning. Oh, yeah. 
I have seen the passing of many souls, and I know the traces they leave behind. The scent of death is still fresh on you. It cannot be washed away, but fades in time. You have to make sure to replenish it with more death to get that attractive death scent. Iliet. Ilet. Iliet. I knew we'd find the capital in a poor bit, poor, bit of a poor state, what with the aftermath of the Civil War and a veritable army of darkness skulking about. But this is just ridiculous. No one said anything about automated war machina stalking the ruins. Mind you, if anyone's brave enough to take them on, they should serve as decent swords of spare parts and whatnot. The machinists will be chuffed to bits. That's a good word, chuffed. We need it in the U.S. more. Ooh, right, so this group, Gidolo, bard guy, or archer guy. I'm rather looking forward to hearing the songs of our comrades' homelands. I love a rousing melody, no matter where it's from. Once the Garleans have found both their strength and their footing again, I shall ask to hear a song of their people, one that conjures visions of home. And, uh... Azul Magia in the comments of the last video had a great point that the vi the radio song really is good. And this is something that Final Fantasy has been consistently good with, is using music for the perspective of... For using music that, like, from the perspective of the Empire. Like, I'm thinking of the Imperial Anthem, the one that was, like, an, a repurposed version of the Alamegan one, and how... It wasn't like a villain theme. It wasn't like the Imperial March from Star Wars, where you know you're the baddies. It was a very noble, expanding your, expanding your reach, and bestowing the Empire's glory on all around you. Like it was that sort of thing. And the, the melody in the, the radio was similarly just really good and really Imperial in a positive way, or really Garlean in a positive way. Hawija. Between guarding our supplies and keeping an eye on the tempered as they undergo treatment, we're certainly kept busy. That's right, they're in that building, I forgot. Sanson. You're kind of the straight man in the group, if I remember. The tempered are being treated here. Some of the Allied Nation's best conjurers are tending to them, but it does not seem like everything is progressing smoothly. What's more, some of the Garleans are prone to violent outbursts from time to time caused by their condition, which is why we're here. Yeah, you're the... The guards here. Okay, June, what do you got? Heroes all. With treatment of the tempered continuing apace, who will care for the carers? We've got Island Mikabob, a skewer of ha hamsa breast and bell peppers grilled to perfection. That sounds delicious. The recipe was brought to the islands by way of Mikote seafarers. Oh, Mikote Mikabob, I, I got gotcha. you. June, could you spare a few moments to assist me? Absolutely. The situation's rather dire, I'm afraid. Even now, our healers continue to treat the Imperial troops encountered on the Magna Glaciace, and prolonged use of curative magics has pushed them beyond their limits. Yeah, they need, some, they need to regen their MP. Cast lucid dreaming. To make matters worse, spending so much time around the Tempered, with all their raving and thrashing about, takes its toll on the carers. I dare say a few words of encouragement from the Champion of Eorzea will help raise their spirits. I also have a few bottles of ether to alleviate their fatigue. Oh, they actually are. I like that. They're actually relieving their fatigue, not with lucid dreaming, but with bottles of ether, which is, again, just a way to recover MP, literally. Would you mind distributing these among the healers? I will do so happily. Weary Mole Healer. Warming ether produces a warming sensation upon consumption thanks to a few special ingredients which may or may not include fearsomely strong cider. It's always important to give healers alcohol before they work. Oh, I've seen you before. You fought bravely at the Nadam, as I recall, and you come bearing gifts. I do. Yes, treating the tempered is a lot harder than I'd imagined. Before we came here, I'd only heard rumors of the condition, but to see it with my own eyes, no one deserves that. No one. That's why the work we do is important. Once I have finished resting, as I was ordered, I shall return to the patients. I thank you for your kindness. Yeah, rest up, friend. Fatigued conjurer. The warrior of light! It's an honor to meet you! You look young. I like your hat, though. 
Oh, I'm just doing my job is all. No need to thank me. Well, truth be told, it's beginning to wear on me, bit by bit. I once lost a friend to tempering. Every time we managed to cure the afflicted, I'm reminded of those we couldn't save. If only we'd had a way of treating them before they were... No, I, I mustn't let such th thoughts cloud my mind. And we're all very grateful for the work of the Scions in creating this treatment. F for my part, I'll do everything in my power to save as many lives as possible. You got this. All the respect that healthcare workers deserve in any context, whether this one or real life. Despondent Conjurer. Hmm? Sorry, I was... I was a bit distracted. I, you, you wouldn't believe some of the things I've seen. This poor bastard's calling out to Varus for salvation, wailing out anthems, praising the Empire. And then there's the screaming. God, I could still hear them. But I mustn't let that stop me from fulfilling my duty. I'll fill my ears with wax if I have to, and once I get this ether down my neck, I'll return to my post. Yeah, this is... looks exhausting. This has got to be utterly exhausting. I've distributed your ether, June. Ah, you finished your rounds then. Did the healers have anything to share? Just that it's exhausting work and mentally and spiritually and physically draining. June. It's worse than I'd thought. Even the tempered we'd seen in our homelands did little to prepare us for the sheer numbers we've encountered here. Curing them all may appear to be an insurmountable task, but we must try. That's why maintaining morale and the well-being of our healers is so important, and you've made a valuable contribution. I'd like you to have this by way of thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you for the Makote Bob. So we got one more side quest over here. Ambagai. Under lock and code. Ambagai has a need for your ability to solve problems, or rather, your ability to, ability to help others solve problems. Um, I, I beg your pardon, but I hear you're a woman of the world. We have a slight problem, and your knowledge might help us solve it. Actually, they came to me first, but when it comes to anything other than the martial arts, I'm unable to provide much in the way of assistance. I did, however, offer to find someone who can, so hopefully I may yet make myself useful. Who came to you? A man of the maelstrom is over by the storeroom, no doubt scratching his head as we speak. I'm sure he'd benefit from your wisdom. Uh, okay, just general wisdom. I can tell him the importance of getting diagnosed with ADHD and uh, if, you, if you have it and how it can help to actually not just fight your way through it, but go on medication and how it makes your life easier. Uh, oh, that's Lucia. Okay, perpetually perturbed maelstrom officer. What's in, the, what's in the box? I was told someone would come to help, but I, I never thought it'd be you. Well, now that you're here, I, I'd like you to take a look at this container we recovered from the Magna Glaciaes. It was one of several, in fact, and though we've succeeded in cracking the others open, this stubborn bugger refuses to yield. All I know is a four-letter password is needed to unlock it. What might that be? I, what that might be, I haven't the foggiest. There might be someone around here who either knows what it is or can point us in the right direction. Could you try asking around for me? I mean, sure. Are you a person I can ask for help? It's only four letters. How many possible combinations is, is that? Um, it's at least 23. Wizia. Sorry, I, I don't know the exact code, but given the container belonged to the Third Legion, perhaps the password has some significance to them? Good call. I assume that if they want it to be really secure, then they would just pick random numbers, but I don't think that would make for as fun gameplay. Legion Decurion. Third Legion Decurion. So you're one of the ones, the Tempered, who's been, convert, who's been turned back, I guess? Container. Sorry, I've never had much to do with them. But if you're after clues, that could lead you to the password. A, a little background information on the Third Legion might be of use. It was formed in the first year of Emperor Solus's reign and spent the first few decades engaged in campaigns across the Northern Territories. 
In the 42nd year for, ex for its exemplary service to the Empire, it was assigned a new role, the protection of the capital, a far more prestigious position. Okay, so 42 is important to them. Wilhelm. Wilhelm. I don't know why you would know, but maybe you'll know. I understand it's common for people to choose dates and so forth of special importance as their password. As for members of the third, nothing springs to mind. Perhaps an anniversary or something along those lines? Yeah, so the, maybe just the date that the date... F well, because they said 42 years ago, not like in year 42, so... I mean, it's a four, it's a four digits though, right? I feel like we don't have the answer yet. This belonged to the Third Legion, and they'd be the ones to pick the password. More, most likely, it'd make it easy to remember. That information we got about the history of the Legion might be a lead worth following, but we've no way of entering numbers, only letters. Oh, but they're Roman... Oh, 42. They're, um... I forgot. They're friggin' Imperials. They're the Roman numerals. So, 42 is... Um... What's 40... What's 42... X, I don't remember what 50 is. X, 50 II. X, L, I, I. Maybe L is 50, if I remember. Yeah, X, L, I, I. Okay. I, wasn't, I would not have thought of that. Good, good call, perpetually perturbed maelstrom officer, if that is your real name. It worked. Ha! Now to inspect our treasure. It's a book. What the bloody hells is this? A flag? Why would they bother keeping this thing locked away? Yeah, why do they keep it locked away? That's interesting. Well, I'll not pretend to understand their ways. Let's just assume they have a good reason for treating a bit of cloth with such reverence. Hmm. Probably best to leave it here undisturbed, as I've no intention of offending anyone. Could I ask you to pass on a word of what we found? Oh, and thanks for your help. Okay. So, I mean, even... Even cultures that, like the Garleans certainly are, would treat their flag with tremendous respect. Like, why? I don't know why you keep it locked in a box. Ambagai. So has the investigation reached its conclusion? It has. Nod, nod. Nod, nod. A Garlean flag. We would be wise to treat it with respect. The chain it bears represents the unity between the people of the Empire, a unity that is all but lost. I never, I always just assumed it was a, um, just a random symbol. I never put together that it was a chain, but that makes sense. To think this banner would be locked away rather than raised proudly, a relic of Garlemald's past, though they have long been our enemies to see its people brought so low. I, forgive me, I have spoken over much. Though the search did not uncover any resources to speak of, at least the mystery of the locked container can be laid to rest. You have our thanks. I didn't even think of that. And I'll, that'll keep coming up a lot, because a lot some of these things are obvious and some of them are not. And there's a good amount of non-obvious stuff. If they were, may, maybe they did keep it locked away because they're ashamed of what the Empire has become and they don't feel like they feel like they have to save it for a better days. That could be. All right, Lucia with the main story quest again. You will be received as invited guests, and so I urge you to observe proper social etiquette and conduct yourselves accordingly. Your safe return takes precedence above all else. Remember this. Thancred, in particular, will be worried sick if you're gone too long. May the Fury watch over and keep you. So this is probably a code, I guess, that... Thancred is going to be like following us from a distance and being roguelike and sneaky. That's my guess at least. As I said before, Thancred can be quite the worrier, but rest assured he only has your best interests at heart. At heart? Because he's going to be traveling in my blood veins? Get it? I see the code. Julius. Are you and, your ch you and the children ready? I will explain the route once we're outside your camp. If anyone attempts to follow us, we will judge it an act of hostility. Yeah, you're not going to see Thancred. He's going to be sneaky. We will not hesitate to take appropriate measures. 
Lucia, I would expect nothing less. You have our full cooperation. I like this angle. It's like a third person. It's like a, sec a third person shooter with thing with uh, Lucia as the main ca main character. All right, a way forward. We got Julius and the twins. Alize. Where do you think their headquarters are? I assume there are a few others beside him and this commander he mentioned. Yeah, I agree. Well, I didn't mean to talk to you. All right, this is Julius. All right, this is far enough. Listen carefully. We head over that hill, then follow the road until we reach Liminal Station 7. Children in the lead, I want you where I can see you. Alize. We do have names, you know. I'm Alize, and he's Alphano. And last but not least, there's Kakushu. Julius. Kakushu. Where have I heard that before? Oh shit, I kind of hope he doesn't remember. No matter. Alphano and Alize will watch the road ahead while we bring up the rear. I wasn't lying about there being many dangers, so you're to run, not saunter, run towards the station. If you even think about going for your weapon, the deal's off. Should any creatures bar the way, we go around them. So this is like a stealth mission then. Once you choose to depart, Julius will accompany you. Alphano and Alize will then begin moving towards the destination. Make your way to Liminal Station 4 without falling behind. If you leave Julius for any reason or lose sight of Alphano and Alize, you will make war break out between these two peoples. Uh, and you may try again by returning to the starting point. Ready to make a dash for the station? Yes, I am. Okay. So we're following you. We're following Alphano and Alize. I probably should have hopped on the Chocobo, but I'm afraid at this point of getting too far behind. No, don't go around the bear. Okay. I was afraid it was... Okay. Thancred, uh, Thancred. Uh, Alphano, this must be the road he mentioned. Alize, if we follow this, it should lead to the station. Yes, it should. Liminal Station 4, he said, right? So it's up there. Not the easiest surface to run on. At least it's a road. You're not like I'm just on a random ice field, snowshoeing it out. Can I talk to Julius? Speak with Julius. If it's conversation you want, save it until we've arrived. So, sorry. At least the twins stopped. Alize, we'd better not draw attention. Can I talk to Alphano? Target is preoccupied, unable to interact. Okay. This is the station, I presume. Yeah, surrounded by these demon things. Jotun. So are Norse giants, right? Norse mythological giants, the Jotun. I seem to remember that. So this is Liminal Station 4. This is a Ceruleum station, though. This isn't a military fort, I think. Okay. Alphano. It's nothing like the ones in Thanalan. Yeah, the, the, yeah, so... Because the, there was, like, Camp Blue Fog. Like, there were some Ceruleum stations in Thanalan. This is different. Alize. We're here, I think. All right, Julius. This is it. The first stop, that is. You think you're being followed? And you are being followed, no doubt, but... Good. It looks like your friends knew better than to follow us. No, it looks like my friends knew better than to get seen by you. Alphano. Are these your headquarters? Julius. No, we're stopping here so I can check for pursuers. Since it appears you've kept your side of the bargain, we can carry on. That's smart and reasonable by Julius. He's wary. Quite reasonable. North of the station is Regio Demorum, one of the main residential areas, or at least it was. Right, Regio is region, like area, and Demorum is the genitive, like the of this, of that, like the possessive of to, of houses. Yeah, so region of houses, or at least it was. The afflicted roam the streets in packs. They'll tear us to shreds if given the chance. Keep close, no wandering off. Understood? Yep, I am with you. Bomb, give me some loot. 
Alizé. I wonder what sort of conditions Julius and his comrades are living in. If they've any sense, they've, they'll have picked somewhere like Victor's spoils to take shelter. Yeah, somewhere indoors, but I'm, I don't know where they'll be. Alphino. We're getting closer to the Imperial Palace, if one can still call it that. It truly is a terrifying sight to behold. So maybe that is the Imperial Palace, like, c corrupted and turned into that spiky thing. Because there's no way it was that way before. I mean, maybe it was. Maybe that's just what it always looked like? I kind of doubt that, but maybe. Let me check something. Because there's this thing on the map. You know what? This was always here, wasn't it? I, I got to see, was this always on the map before, even before Endwalker? This kind of spiky three-pronged palace? If so, then I guess this is just the Imperial Palace as it was. Julus. The Last Bastion. Julus knows only too well that danger lurks around every corner. From here, we'll be heading northeast. Keep to the left of the railway. While the route itself is straightforward, getting past the hordes unseen is anything but. Keep your weapons at the ready. Alphano. They would attack their own countrymen. They're tempered. They will they'll attack anyone. Julius. Aye. They'll spare their own slaughter, but they're all they'll spare their own but slaughter their rest without hesitation. Though we'll try to avoid detection, the chances of sneaking by completely unnoticed are slim at best. I will lead the way, but in the event we are seen, you are to fight them off. Those two will follow us, provided they can refrain from drawing their weapons. While I doubt they would be foolish enough to stab their guide in the back, I will not take that chance. With that said, let us proceed. Okay, so I'm fighting them all. So he's still, again, he's being very cautious in a way that I, I kind of appreciate. So I'm to fight them off, but he's still holding fast to the twins, at least not drawing their weapons. Because, yeah, if they do, the deal's off. Oh wait, my chocobo needs to come to the rescue. Pigeon, I summon thee. Got him. Alize, Alize. God damn it, we're perfectly capable of holding our own. Yeah, she would take this not being allowed to fight pretty roughly. Alphano. And I think that's the problem. He knows that you're capable of holding your own. He doesn't want to give you an advantage. By the way, just ignore my little dark shadow self over there. He's fine. Alpha, no. We must stay alert. All right, let's move on, Julius. See where your comrades chose you. Alpha, no. Julius, our contingent has a cure for the afflicted, or tempered as we call them. Your people would need to be taken into custody that we may administer the treatment, but they would eventually regain their sanity. So let's take bets. On the scale of zero to zero, what's the likelihood that Julius will like the idea of Imperials being taken into custody by our team? Is that so? For all I know, your treatment would simply force them to forsake one master for another. As far as my Legion and I are, con Legion and I are concerned, they are no longer our people. They're beyond saving. Those who thought differently and tried to reason with them were butchered for their bleeding hearts. Come, we have to keep moving. We don't have bleeding hearts. We have magic pigs. It's a whole other story. The runaway train. This is interesting. So maybe their base is inside like a, a derailed train. That's kind of cool. That's very cool. Unless this is just another waypoint. Yeah, this is just another waypoint. Got him. Alizé, how are you holding up not having to, not being able to fight? I hate to watch you bear this burden alone. Understand. Understandable. Alpha, no. Dot, dot, and dot. Julius. Looks like we're not being followed. We will continue onward. Okay. No train base. That's okay.
Oh, nice. Julius killed a couple on his own. Good job. Alizé. He truly believes nothing could be done for them. No wonder he isn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Yeah, he assumes they're dead already, which they were up until, like, late in the last expansion. Alphano. The surest way to limit casualties is to reach our destination without drawing attention to ourselves. Perhaps afterwards we can try to conv again to convince Julius that the Tempered can be saved. I mean, we have some proof. Like, we have Tempered being saved right now, but again, he's not in any position to, to listen to us in any way. Julius. I meant what I said. These people, these people deserve only death. I stayed my hand before out of a desire to remain undiscovered, but... And that is still the higher priority. We should continue to avoid any unnecessary confrontations. Keep following the railway. So, this at least... Because I was wondering before how competent is Julius. Because we know... Yeah, I was, I was wondering before how competent is Julius because we know that he is... Like that he was promoted younger than would be usual, and I expect that it was still out of necessity, but I also expect that he is competent at the same time. Like, competent and patriotic and passionate and determined and loyal and all that sort of Garlean soldier stuff. Uh, uh, oh god, they got the tentacle faces going on. Alpha no. Such a transformation is likely irreversible. Yeah, that's probably the sign that the magic pigs won't work anymore. Alize. To think they were once ordinary people. Julius. Look at what they bec have become. Would you still stand here and claim that they can be cured? Well, not once they reach this point, but there are plenty of people that can be cured before a certain point, but not after another point. Alpha no. Those exposed to a vast quantity of a primal's ether may suffer severe corruption. Even with treatment, such victims are beyond salvation. Julius, then you admit it. Now that you have seen these monstrosities for yourselves, perhaps you will think twice before speaking of a cure. No, again, we're speaking of a cure in a particular context. We had, so far we faced four enemies alongside you that were curable and two that were not. As far as I, if, if the tentacle faces is the sign of when cures are no longer a thing. Alize. Even her in the, here in the outskirts, it's plain to see how vastly different Garlemald is compared to other cities. It's a very stone and military look to it. Alphano. Though I wish there were another way, I thank you for keeping us from harm. You are welcome. Julius. We're almost there. You have to keep, you've kept your side of the agreement, and so I will keep mine. This way. I really hope at this point that, because I, beforehand, we didn't really know for sure whether they would, like if, if Thancred weren't following us, we didn't know for sure if he would keep his side of the bargain, but he does seem very imperial, and for all their flaws, I think that most of the time the real diehard Imperials have tended to be... No, never mind. There's enough treacherous bastards that we you can't really know. Julius. This is Tertium, one of Garlemont's largest stations. It now serves as our headquarters. I've already sent the twins ahead. They will be with you soon. So wait for me at the bottom of the stairs. Ooh, is, are we going underground? I didn't think that, but that would make sense. Last bat, Tertium is a sanctuary. Theodore. Oh, Theodora something, something, something. She clearly has no, no intention of speaking with you. Who is she cradling? Just a dead Imperial or a wounded Imperial? One of those. Got someone here. What are you doing? Just trying to stay warm. Very quiet. These are... 
These almost look like these have to be rail converted rail cars, right? Yeah, this is a this is I guess a rail station. Alize. I had no idea they had such expansive structures built underground. Yeah, you've never met a subway before, have you? Literally. Alpha no. It's plain to see why they chose this as their base of operations. Alize. It could have done a lot worse. Even so, I imagine it's not the easiest place to live. Alphano. Indeed. And if Julius was willing to make the perilous journey to Camp Broken Glass in search of food, their own supplies must be all but exhausted. They may be shielded from the wind and snow, but it's still bitterly cold. Much like Victor's spoils, it must be a constant struggle to keep their people warm. And... And the tappers, I imagine, while they might be willing to trade for to trades to some of the civilians, are probably not inclined to trade to the Imperial Legions. Imperial, Imperial military. Julius, lower your voices. While you may be here as my guests, the others will not take kindly to your presence. My commander's in the locomotive over there. Yeah, this feels this this does feel above board. Okay, so now that he told us to not make our presence known, let's go talk to everyone possible. I'm on you. Okay, yeah, actually it's probably gonna be everyone, right? Yeah. It hurts. Hmm. Yeah, just to make sure, is there a uh no, there's. I was. I wasn't sure if there was going to be something down here. No, yeah, no one. Okay, let's just actually. Never mind. Let's uh, open, unlock this etherite, and then we'll talk to. We'll continue with the main story here. Etherite's not respond. Even the etherite won't talk to me. Rude. Alize. He certainly looks the part. Imposing commander. You have a lush beard, my friend. What's it called when there's no mustache? Alphano, now comes the true test. Imposing commander. I will deal with you in a moment. Julius. These are their chosen representatives. Very well. Let us hear what they have to say. Yes, sir. I present to you our commander. Lord Quintus Van Kena, Legatus of the First Legion. Quintus Van Kena, okay. The first? I had no idea you had survived. Wait, the first legion. So the first legion was, was, the one we fought, the one with the tempered leader, wasn't it, Virgilia? We lost our emperor, our city, more than half our troops. For my wounds, I may never take the field again. But we survived. I. In a manner much to your liking, I dare say. It's better than if you were ready and raring to kill us all. I guess so. We have no intention of adding to your misfortunes, nor do we bear you any ill will. I mean, speak for yourself. I bear you some ill will, but not for what's happened here. Spare me. Though you children may speak in earnest, overtures of peace ever ring hollow in my ears. So long as man stands to profit from his neighbor's suffering, war is inevitable. And so you just want to make sure you're doing the ones doing the profit? Is that is that how you justify being an imperial legatus to yourself? 
driven from our ancestral homeland into this blasted waste. Yet still you yearned to rob us of our paltry scraps. I get the whole ancestral homeland thing, like how they were driven there and it sucked, and how they fought to take some of it back. I get that. But then they went out and tried to conquer like a million other peoples, so... It was only with Magitek that you learned to keep your distance. Though we knew it was only a matter of time before you regrouped and returned. Conquest and Empire were our only defenses. Mm. Emperors Solus and Varys understood this, and through their campaigns saw us grow and prosper. Much blood has been spilled in Garlemald's name, aye. But if it is a choice between yours and mine, then it is hardly a choice at all. Yeah, so this at least explains a lot of their mentality around... I mean, not Emperor Solus's mentality, because his, his, his purpose was far different than his peoples, but it explains to me how they justify their actions, at least. That they saw they were booted out, kicked to some wasteland, and so once they got power, they had to be aggressive to keep it. I mean, again, it, totally 100% wrong, but, like, I, I appreciate that perspective. I can, I can see where they're coming from. I do not deny that a great many conflicts throughout history were driven by the desire or necessity to gain by another's loss. That is not why we are here. I also like that Alphino is not getting lost in the weeds of this, not getting lost in, like, debates on history. He's just focusing on the present. Nor have we come to petition your aid in the war with the Telophoroi, grave though that threat may be. Our purpose is simply this. We wish to help you. Let us help you. If there is aught that can be done to ease your plight, we would be glad to do it. Perhaps you would. But regardless of the ideals you espouse, your leaders would not send an army into Garlemald if they did not stand to benefit. No, we do stand to benefit. Like, if this were just... I, I, again, this is not a purely nation-building exercise. If we accept their aid, they will expect their efforts to be rewarded once the Telophoroi are no longer a threat. I mean, we'd like you to not After try to conquer your peoples. and concessions, the great empire would be brought to heel. Her enemies rejoice at her downfall. Our third eye, a mark of shame. You already are brought to heel. We won't stand idly by and let your people be humiliated. And we're not alone in that. We only want to make a difference, to make this world of ours better. Surely you can understand that. What I'm trying to say is, there are so, so many people who just don't care about making you suffer. And maybe that's almost insulting after all the suffering you feel the world has subjected your people to, but... I really like this line. Believe it or not, that's the truth. And now we're here, and all we're asking is for you to tell us what you want, what you hope for. Because for all of this, for all the that we're hearing here about his, his philosophy on conflict and the purpose of war and how people will always find a way to, to cause grief and to, to profit from others' grief and others' loss, I don't think he's a sadist. I don't think the imperial philosophy is fundamentally about joy in causing others' pain. I really don't. So much blood has been shed, so much lost. All because of this endless war. Who wouldn't want to end it? Can we not work together to face our problems as one? I mean, probably not. Answer me this, young peacemakers. Okay. If a world without conflict is your desire, why reject the unity and prosperity of Garlemald? Because it's 
not because it's not a world without conflict. It's if Garlemald, we've seen places where Garlemald has taken the reins and it causes their people suffering and pain and murder. We've seen what Yotsuyu, one of my favorite characters in all of fiction, let alone the final in Final Fantasy and especially fiction all to overall, let alone Final Fantasy. She was a monstrous viceroy and she was given all the power to just do whatever she wanted according to her whims. That's why. Because you're crappy leaders. Is it because we do not share your faith? No, it's because you're monstrous enslavers. That we do not share your heritage? Uh, no, it's because you're monstrous enslavers. That our ideals and virtues differ? That we cherish and hold in the highest that which you do not? Again. Disparity is the root of discord. And peace built on compromise is flawed and fleeting. Happiness for one and all is a dream. And the reality is that to the victor go the spoils. Even for self-preservation, you're about to be on the losing side of this. Don't you want to give yourself a chance at being a victor in the future? That is why we Garlians will never submit nor surrender. For freedom and for pride, we will remain true to ourselves until the bitter end. That is my hope. I don't think the end needs to be bitter. I don't think you need to be Licinia running away in the snow to die alone. It seems there is nothing more to say on the matter. We're envoys. Are you kidding me? You will remain here while I decide what is to be done with you. Do not be alarmed. No harm will come to you if you cooperate. We came to you in the... Sp oh yeah, Thancred's going to come here and kick your ass in a second. I'm not worried about this, but... We came here as envoys. As in... With diplomatic... Im diplomatic immunity isn't just a modern invention. Yeah, this is Thancred vision, I'm guessing. We will not resist. However, as your guests, I ask that we be allowed to speak with the other members of your group. As you wish. I had no intention of locking you up. As by dawn, you would be frozen stiff and you're no good to me dead. You are free to move about the encampment. But there is one condition. What's that? Collar them. Yeah, it's weird that we wouldn't want to be under Garlean rule. Very strange. It's a, it's a true mystery. What are these? Incentive. You'll be watched at all times. Stray too far or act suspiciously, and we will administer a rather painful shock. Stop. Keep away from that one. Okay. The champion of Eorzea is not so easily cowed. Oh, Alizea is not going to like this. Yeah, he recognizes me, but no one else had. Julius didn't even. Even if she allowed herself to be collared, the shock would be no more than an itch. No. If she refuses to obey, we will activate the twins' restraints instead. Yeah, boy, you suck, dude. You needn't worry about us. And I'm glad that we're not just that the game isn't just converting the empire into victims. Um, it's being even as it's showing how there are definitely elements where they're not in control and where they were wrong. It's still showing clearly at most turns that they still suck. We'll forget we're even wearing them soon enough. Even now, you still. <laughs> Why go to such lengths? What is it all for? Because they are 
truly and sincerely want to help the Garleans. Both intrinsically and for the... Both intrinsically and for self-interest. Because even the most bitter adversary may one day see reason. On the coldest, blackest nights meter, though it may be, we must share the warmth of our fire. Yeah, I don't think saying one day you'll see reason is that enticing. I think it's like telling someone who's frustrated to calm down. Let's do this one. Hello, cat. Oh, is that something Harshafon said to us? I didn't remember that. You are a curious one. A far cry from the merciless barbarian others paint you to be. You will be their warden. Take them away. Yes, sir. There was that moment... Good acting from Julius, if he were an actor. He was a moment's hesitation before he went back into Imperial Yes Sir mode. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, so that's going to be it for me for right now. Uh, I'm going to call it here. I don't. I wonder if the Etherite will let me use it now. No, not yet. Okay, thanks for watching. I will see you all later. Bye-bye.